Hey guys, it's Robin, R. S. Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Today, I'm going to show you how to use some of your leftover scraps of fabric and batting and some flannel to turn it into some quilty alphabet letters. As you can see, today I spelled craft because we're going to work on a craft project together. Now, for my letters, I have a whole variety of scraps. But before we get into the fabrics, let's talk about how to get these letters. Now I'm going to put a link down below in the description box for the website that I used for my letters. I was able to choose different size letters from two and a half inches all the way up to, I believe it was five inches. But several different blogs that talk about how to make these letters, they mention that you can go into your computer and in your Word section area. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about this because I don't do this, but you can change and pick different fonts and change the different size and the look of your letters and then print it out from there. I just went for someone that was really quick and had all the letters ready for me. I don't mind having this straight shape like this. You can get them differently if you're going into your Word document area and use the different fonts for the more of the bubbly letters and the more different types. There's such a variety. You guys know if you're doing any type of work like that, how many different fonts there are. You can also just search for coloring pages and find different stencils. And if you're just, if you find a stencil, a lot of times they'll have the little cutout part so that the stencil, you can't have the whole stencil because when you pull it out and such like that, there's always little connector pieces. If you want to use a stencil, you can just go ahead and skip those parts and just make it all connected. After I printed mine out, I put mine on some flat rate envelopes that I had left over from the post office. You can go ahead and use ones that have come to your house and recycle them. You can use cardboard from cereal boxes. You can use the clear cutting mats from the Dollar Tree. These are great if you're going to make a whole bunch of them. If you're just going to make these ones, just printing them out on the printer paper is going to be perfectly fine. And you're just going to get you through the one process that you're going to need. I think these are really great for the little kids. So if there's any grandmas and grandpas out there and you want to make them for the grandkids, you want to make them for your own children, they'd be nice maybe for some of the preschools at church or something or at the schools if they might want some donated for the kids to play with. Now, some people like to put magnets in them so that they can put them on the refrigerator. And I'll give you an idea about when to put the magnet in, but I choose not to use them because now it is safe for the smaller kids. You're always gonna wanna keep an eye on them whenever they're working with anything, but I always worry that a magnet can eventually wear out and get pushed out through. And I don't wanna ever have a problem with a child having access to a magnet because it's very dangerous for them to swallow them. As you can see, I used a variety of fabrics for my letters. I have some that are solids, and then I just have some fun ones. I did try to put this one down on this little animal print so that I would get the monkey in the center of the X. A little bit of everything. These are really fun if you just go ahead and stick with like the solids and the rainbow colors. It makes it very easy for the kids to see the actual letters. Some of them are obvious even when you use some of the really big time novelty fabric. It can still be seen on what letter it is. I did notice that things like the M's and W's are a little bit harder. But I think the more the kids play with these, the more things are going to be easier to see. Now for the backs, I chose to use just the same flannel on the back of all of them. That way the kids will always know which way the letter goes. Like here's the fun fabric for the G. Oh, okay, it's on the gray side, so that's backwards. It's totally up to you if you wanna do that, if you wanna go totally scrappy and just use all variety of fabrics for the front and back. I did choose to use the novelty fabric on the front of my letters because I wanted the bright, fun colors, but flannel does also come in a variety of colors. And then I chose the flannel on the back because I like how soft it is. And also as these are being used and as they get washed and go through the dryer, they're going to start to get a little bit frayed on the edges. I did use pinking shears, but they're very difficult to use pinking shears on the center. So it does give that extra texture to the letters, but I like how soft the flannel is on the back. I also used a piece of cotton batting on the inside of mine. It gives it just that little bit extra of a squish to it. You could put a couple layers of batting or use some of the thicker polyester batting, or you can just go ahead and skip it and just stick with the cotton on the front and the flannel on the back. And if you want it to be really soft, you can use flannel on the front and flannel on the back. 
However you want to work these, this is a really great scrappy project. You can use your leftover fabrics from your quilting. You can use leftover clothing fabrics from if you're making your clothes for the kids. Anything you only just need for my size, I just needed a little five by five inch square. So these are perfect if you have little leftovers from charm packs. On the site that's linked below, they also have numbers. I haven't done anything with my numbers yet, but I think that would also be fun for recognition because they need to know their numbers and they need to know their letters also. So then you can go ahead and mix it up. So let me walk you through the process of making these letters. I've actually been working on my name. So here's the R, O, B, I have the I already done. And here is the N. So I mentioned I printed it out on my printer. I used a glue stick just to glue it down to this thin cardboard. If you haven't seen a flat rate shipping envelope, it's just like a cereal box. It's a nice thin cardboard. So not only do I keep bins of my scraps for my fabric, but I also have a bin for my small batting scraps. So when I make quilts or I make bags and stuff and I have smaller bits that are left over that I can easily turn into something, I save them in this container. So a lot of times I have a long strip from coming off of the side of a quilt. So I've just pulled those out and I went ahead and I cut out five by five squares. Char Packs makes this really quick and easy. All of the fabrics are from one line of fabric generally, unless you're using leftovers from a variety of packs. They're already five by five so that you could just take your five by five fabric, cut out your scrappy batting at five by five and then same thing with your flannel. Now when I started, I layered all three of these and I was putting my letter down and then I was tracing around it. I'm using today a Frixion pen. This comes, erases off with the heat of your iron. And then I have a white jelly roll because I found that even with the black pen, it's very difficult if you're drawing on black fabric. So this one, you can kind of see the white line just through there. I used brown thread to sew all of these down with. You can see that back here on the back. But it's okay, I don't mind to have that little bit of a highlight on there. I think the white just makes it pop up more and it's not that big of a deal. But there are a variety of pens and pencils and you can use chalk and things like that to trace it around. For a scrappy project like this, as I mentioned, I didn't mind if the little bit of a white showed up. Now, as I said, this comes off when you're using an hot iron. Some people say in cold weather that the lines can come show back up. But for the most part, we're gonna easily be able to sew on our line. If we get a little bit off, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. As the kids start playing with these and they go through the washer and dryer, they're gonna get all kind of poofy and puffy from our batting and stuff because I'm using 100% cotton batting. Those sewing lines are gonna disappear a little bit into the fabric and you're not gonna notice them as much. I say as long as you don't use a big old fat Sharpie marker, you'll be okay. You can just use a really thin pen or a pencil if you want. But I noticed when I was doing this, and my first thought was stack everything up and trace the letter. But as you're doing it, because of the batting and then the extra fabric and stuff, this is a little bit squishy. So then of course I realized, gee, it'd be a lot easier if I just take it off, just center my letter in there, just hold it down with my hand. Since I have the cardboard, it wouldn't be easy for me to uh, to use pins or anything to hold it down. I could use some washi tape if I wanted to. So I don't mind if I just go off and I get onto my letter. There we go, we can see that on there. And I layer all three layers together of whatever material you're using. I like to put a couple pins in just to hold it so that I can go ahead and do all of my letters at once. So I went ahead cut out all of my fabrics and all of my batting, traced all of my letters, pinned them all down. Then I can take each one to the sewing machine. So let me show you on this one again. Now this one, since it's that dark blue, I could see some of the black around it, but it's just so much easier to, to use this. I can find these on Amazon and I saw them at Walmart the other day. They come in a three pack with different widths. I like to use these also when I'm tracing things for embroidery. I just go ahead and trace around. 
You could also freehand and draw these letters if you're good. I remember back in the 80s doing bubble letters was really popular. A lot of the girls like to draw on their notebooks and stuff with them. So if you want bubble letters or something that you're able to draw, you can use graph paper if you're not able to print things out. So that's what it looks like when you use that white marker. I think that works out really good on the dark fabrics. And we'll lay that down. Now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I went ahead and decreased my stitch length to a 2.0. I wanted to have something nice and dense and tight when I did it so that I didn't have to worry about anything being loose and the kids doing anything to be able to pull it apart at all. Plus I wanted it to be sturdy to be played with and go through the washer and dryer repetitively if needed. I did choose, as I mentioned, to use brown thread for mine, but what you can do if you want to make sure whatever your fabric is the lightest, as I used a light gray here, I could have went with a white thread here or a light gray. I don't mind having that outline of the stitches on there, but if that bothers you, just go ahead and match your thread and your bobbin to whatever fabrics you're using. When I take this over to sew, I'm gonna stitch right on the line. I like to start on a straight section if the letter has one, and I just sew all the way around, staying on the line. I go really slow around the curves, make sure I get all along that letter, and then I also stitch around the centers here. So you wanna make sure you get those because we're gonna to need to cut out those areas, just like I did with the letter R. So I'm gonna go ahead and take both of these over and I'll stitch them up and I'll show you what they look like. Make sure I backstitch at the end. You have an option that you can go ahead and cut your thread here, or you can just slide it over and then do the insides of your B. Now we'll turn that thread when we're done. This is the letter N, the letters without the centers. They're really quick and easy to stitch. Especially with all the straight lines. Just trim off our threads. Trim off all the threads from when we jumped from one section to the next. Yep, so all we gotta do is take it over and cut it all out now. Now you have a couple options for when you're cutting these out. I have some pinking shears here that have So they have the serrated edges on it, and that's what I use to go ahead and cut around these. But for certain letters, like the R, I was able to pink a little bit in here, then I needed to use regular scissors. The same thing with the M's and the W's, you can only go so far up. You do need to get up a little bit into here, and the same thing down at the top. So if we're just doing a simple one like an N, we can just go ahead and cut across. I give it about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Just try to keep whatever measurement you decide to be relatively the same as you're going around it. You are going through some thick fabric here between the batting and the felt. It can be a little bit difficult to cut with these scissors. There are rotary cutter blades that you can use that have a pinking rotary cutter on it so that you just run your little rotary cutter across it and it will go ahead and pink those for you. I don't have one, so I can't show you. I do like to take my little pinking scissors and go on the corners. I just like how it gives it a little bit of a rounded look there. You don't have to do this. It's just something that I've been doing. And when I go to the here on the inside of the end, I would just go up a little bit. I found that a little hard in this section to go and push it down, so I was having to go and push on the table. You just want to be careful that you don't go all the way up into your stitching. If you do, you can go ahead and make another letter or just restitch that one section. And then to do this one here, I found it easier to flip the letter over so that I, for me, right-handed, always being on the right-hand side of the line worked. And I have that little section right there. So I just went ahead and got some nice sharp scissors. I just went, just a little snip, 
I left myself at least a quarter of an inch to go up into that section. I don't want to go all the way to the stitching line, but close to it is fine. Trim those corners up a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. If I go a little bit at a time, then I don't have to worry about putting it down on the table. Just go little by little. Just make sure you don't slip and go all the way into your stitching line. Same thing on this side. And if they're still connected, you just take your sharp scissors and snip whatever's there. Cut up to the line. And then just come back, round off those corners a little bit, give it a little bit of a shake, and there is my letter N. If you want, you can just go ahead and take your scissors, your standard everyday scissors, just go ahead and just trim it down and just cut all the way around. And if you throw this in the washer and dryer, it will cause this edge here to fray. The pinking shears will stop it from fraying for the most part. You can still get a little bit of a soft fraying edge to it. So you can go like that, and that's just what your letter's gonna look like. You're gonna wanna take it and just give that little snip right there into the center of the B just so you get that little bit of a curve. You can take a little bit out. You just want your B to come in. So what about these, the letters that have that center part? If you've ever made a buttonhole stitch, whether it's for a project, a purse, or for clothing, you'll know that after you make your little hole, you take your seam ripper to slice open the fabric so you can get your scissors in there to clean out the hole. Well, I decided that that's a great idea for here too. I'm just gonna take one of my old seam rippers. They're not very sharp down here anymore, but this point is still very sharp. Being careful not to stab my fingers, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the fabric. Just poke it through. I set it on the table and I just take it and I gently but firmly push it forward and not super hard or fast because I don't wanna slice it all the way open. I just wanna make an area for my scissors to get in. Just, just a little bit. It doesn't take much to get into it. You can do it if you're holding it up in the air also. You just want to be careful you have control of it and you don't slide all the way through. Again, if you slice all the way through, you just make another letter. Then you can come in with some nice sharp scissors. If you have smaller scissors that are nice and sharp, these used to be really sharp. They came in a suture set. When you get stitches in the emergency room, they let you keep the scissors. And as a crafter, every time my husband got stitches, I kept all the scissors. These are really old now and they're not as sharp anymore, so they did not work for cutting through all these layers. So I just took my nice, good, sharp scissors. These are sharp all the way to the tip. Again, quarter inch to an eighth of an inch, somewhere along there. And I just trim around that center of the O. I could do it for the P, I did it for the R. Keep working your way around till you get back. And if you look at it and you notice that you've left too much fabric, which I think mine is fine. I like the way the amount of fabric that's left there. So if you notice that there's too much fabric left out, you can just go ahead and trim out some more. This, with these size of pinking shears, there was no way I was going to easily be able to get inside there. So what happened? So my pinking on the outside is not gonna match my straight cutting on the inside. But it's gonna be okay, because all of my rounded letters are gonna still look the same. They're all gonna have pinked on the outside, like all the letters, and then any of the insides are gonna be cut out in a little bit with the straight stitches, scissors. You think the kids are gonna notice? They're not gonna notice. They're still gonna be able to tell their alphabet. So there we go, we got the letter O, straight stitches in there. This was going to fray up a little bit as it goes through the wash and gets used and stuff. And then I have the pinked edges on the outside. Go ahead and cut my B with my pinking shears just so it matches all of my other letters. I'm gonna show you one more time on this little itty bits on the Bs. They are a little more difficult because you have less room, but you can still just Pop the pointy end in. If you don't have a seam ripper, you can go ahead and use sharp scissors. If you're careful, you can fold your fabric. You just wanna make sure you're not gonna cut past any of the lines 
and put a little bit of a snip in there. So these are very sharp scissors. They are Ginger sewing scissors. So they're really sharp. You can just work your way around. I've got a straight edge, so I'll just go straight down. I still have some of the felt, so I'll just trim that off. It's not a big deal. Take my little seam ripper on the top part. Just a little bit, just enough to get my scissors tip in. Most of your sewing scissors has one really narrow, sharp point, and then they just have the regular one, so you get that sharpest one in, the skinniest point, and you can just get in there and spin around. You just want to make sure you get enough of a hole so that you can see some light coming through it. Now, if you're making smaller letters, it might be a little bit more difficult, but you just take a little bit of patience and you can get it done. Now, if you wanted to put a magnet in it, what I would suggest is you have to watch based on the letter. Like this letter M, if you put a magnet right here and you put it on the refrigerator, it could just dangle from here. Sometimes you might have to put two in, depending on the letter and how you want it to sit, so you can give a little bit of practice just to see how it might hang on the refrigerator. Same thing with the letter Y, you might have to put two magnets. You can try putting one in the center to see how it is. But the way I would put it in is I would trace out my letter and have everything all set up. I would start sewing. Decide where you're gonna put the magnet. If you wanna put the magnet there, I would start sewing. Go all the way around. And then when I get to here, I would go ahead and pop the magnet in and then stitch around. Now that magnet's gonna be in here and it could move around and be loose, so it's totally up to you. You could take some matching thread or something or use some glue on it to hold it in place. It's going to be able to be slid around in a letter like this, so you might have to stitch across it. I really prefer these to not have any magnets at all. There are some of those magnetic sheets that you could put on for the back that are really thin. But again, you really wanna keep an eye on the kids if you're gonna let them play with this on the refrigerator with magnets. As long as you don't have any loose threads coming off of it and you're keeping an eye on them, the little kids like the nine months old, they can still play with these. So if the older kids have them, if you have a variety of ages and you don't wanna worry about the older kids playing with the magnets on the fridge and then the younger kids getting them, I would just go without the magnets. That way they can take these anywhere and they can play with them on the floor. And they can have fun spelling out different words and spelling out their names. If you know which child you're making these for specifically, it's a good idea so that they have extra letters for their name. So if their name happens to be Yvette, then you wanna have extra E's and extra T's for them so that they can actually spell out their name completely. My name is nice and simple, just one of each letter and I'm good to go. So here's my entire alphabet, all kinds of scrappiness. You can go ahead and do rainbow colors and do gradients so that the kids will see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo violet and just keep on going down the line you can do all of them a variety of reds just have 26 different red fabrics or all the same red fabric it all depends on what's going to work for you and your children i do love a little bit of scrappy every now and then so this would be fun for me if you just want a bunch of bright and fun colors a bit of scrappiness is really great for these alphabets too if you have more than one child and you want to make more than one alphabet, you can use a different color on the back so that each child knows which letters belong to their set. Children are always going to fight, but hopefully that will solve one of the little fights that they might have about it. I used the sunflower for my T, but I could have also used the sunflower fabric for the S, so you can always match the letter to the fabric if you want to plan ahead for something like that. So if you have any questions that I didn't cover, please leave them down below in the comments. So for those that have made it to the end of the video, I like to give a special code word per video. And that just shows that you are a super fan or a subscriber or you just enjoy my videos and you've made it all the way to the end. So please, in your comments, use the code word APPLE. And I'll know you've made it all the way to the end of this video. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.